Hi everyone and welcome for Recipe for the Cure. My name is Julie and this is my sous chef Robin and we are both dietitians here at John Thurrer Cancer Center, part of Hackensack Meridian Health Network. So today we are gonna be doing um, the first part of our series. We're gonna be making three delicious recipes. If you've ever joined us prior to COVID, we used to do in-person cooking studios live every single Friday. We would cook new recipes, we would taste test them, and of course we would talk all things nutrition. So today we are bringing that back and we're doing it um, in a live safe event. All right, so we are gonna get started first with this turkey meatloaf. So we're gonna start with a veggie packed turkey meatloaf and then we are going to make a creamy corn polenta and we are gonna finish off with some blistered green beans. So we've got three delicious and nutritious recipes for you. We're gonna get lots of vegetables, we're gonna be choosing a lean protein um, and we're gonna cook a delicious meal. If you do make any of these recipes at home or you are cooking alongside with us, make sure to post it on social media and use the hashtag recipe for the cure so that we can see. We love seeing everybody get involved in this. So starting with the turkey meatloaf, let's just talk about the ingredients that we're going to be using. So the vegetables that we're going to be using are zucchini, a carrot, and then a onion, which is already grated right here. In terms of the protein, so we're going to be using turkey instead of the traditional ground beef that most meatloafs would have because we're trying to include more lean proteins in our diet. And then we're gonna use oatmeal and egg to bind it. And then in terms of flavor, we're gonna use garlic, salt, pepper. We're gonna throw in a little Worcestershire sauce and just a little bit of ketchup. So it's a super simple, but it's a super delicious recipe. So we're gonna get started first with grating these veggies. Robin, if you don't mind, pass that over to you. Pass the baton. And I'm gonna start with the zucchini. So one of the reasons that I like this recipe so much is because zucchini grows quite abundantly in the summer. Um, if you go to any farmer's markets or grocery stores, you're probably gonna see it everywhere that you go. And zucchini is actually an excellent source of potassium. So I know a lot of times we think that potassium, um, bananas, but zucchini is just as good of a source of potassium. So in the summer months, this is a staple in my house. So we use zucchini all the time. Um, like I said, it grows so abundantly, it's easy to find. One of my favorite recipes is zucchini noodles, aka zoodles or whatever else you wanna call it. Um, but it's a great way to incorporate more vegetables into your meal. You can mix it with pasta or just eat it on its own. My favorite way to cook it um, is just with some olive oil, a little garlic, and then throwing in some chicken or shrimp on top. All right, I don't want to chop my fingers off. I have a lot of injuries on my hands from cooking. Okay, so that's about it. I'm gonna get this turned on. So we're gonna cook this on medium heat. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of olive oil. I know the recipe says about a teaspoon, um, give or take a little bit. I'm gonna pour that. And then of course we need to add some garlic. So you can absolutely use fresh cloves of garlic. I think one of the easiest uh, kitchen shortcuts is to buy the pre-minced garlic. You can keep it in the fridge, it's super easy to use. About one teaspoon of this pre-minced garlic is gonna be equivalent to one clove of garlic. So add that in there. There we go. Very strong smell to it. So we're gonna get that going. And then we are gonna add in these vegetables. So you wanna add that. So this is about maybe a cup? Yeah, I would say it's about Three a cup. quarters or so. And we're gonna add in the zucchini. So all these veggies are gonna cook down quite significantly. There's a lot of water in there, so when you saute them, um, it reduces quite a lot. So this is, like I said, pre-grated. Um, it's not the easiest thing to grate onions. Uh, so if you do have a food processor at home, you can absolutely just use a food processor um, to blend all of this. Okay. Yeah. So Robin is gonna get started off with a creamy polenta. We're gonna combine milk and water and we're gonna bring that to a low boil. Um, and then that's gonna take about 15, 20 minutes to cook once it's in. You can hear the sizzle here. And you can smell the garlic, it's even more fragrant now. So as you can see with this, um, you know there's a lot of different colors already and this is just in one dish. So the more colors we can add into our meals, the better. Every different color fruit and vegetable is gonna have different vitamins and minerals in it. So if we're only focusing on getting, let's say, the greens or the reds, we're missing out on all the other nutrients that the other different fruits and vegetables contain. 
the bright orange color that you can see here. So that is from the beta carotene and beta carotene is what's needed for our bodies to make vitamin A. Um, I know vitamin A, a lot of times we think eye health, um, but it also is really important for wound healing um, and even immunity. So a great way to get those veggies in. Ooh, that looks pretty already. Doesn't it? And it smells good. So meanwhile, over here, um, I know I had mentioned that we're gonna be using oats. So these are quick cooking oats and you have to use the quick cook. So we're gonna add one fourth cup of broth to this. This is chicken broth. You can use vegetable broth. You can even use water if you want to. It really won't make a huge difference, but we're just gonna mix this up and soften the oats. And we're gonna let it sit here um, until we're ready to mix everything together. So that's in place of traditional bread, bread crumbs. crumbs. Yep, and this is a really good way too for us to increase the fiber. So oats are a great example of soluble fiber, um, and that's what helps you to feel full and it helps to slow down digestion. Um, so any way we can get more fiber in our diets, I think it's always good. And in this recipe, you're gonna be getting it from the vegetables and you're gonna be getting it from the oats. Okay. Do you cook with a lot of zucchini in the summer? Or is it I just do. me? I do, because I do grow it in my garden and you know when it comes, it doesn't it doesn't stop coming. No, it it's does. everywhere. Yeah. I grew up in a small town in Warwick, a little bit uh, away from here. And I remember in the summer, we'd go past all the local farms and they'd always have mounds and mounds of zucchini sitting on the side of the road that you could pick up. So we always had it growing up and it's still to this day, one of my favorites. I have been known to make midnight runs to people's homes and just dump them on the front <laughs> steps. <laughs> yeah, it's quite abundant. Okay, so this is cooking down very nicely. I'm just gonna get this set up over here and we are gonna start mixing together this meatloaf. Right here. Okay, so when we mix this together, one thing that we wanna note is that we don't wanna over mix it. We wanna mix it just enough so that everything's combined, but not so much that we're kind of creating a, a sticky paste. These are about to be done. Um, Robin, if you don't mind just stirring these while I mix everything, we're gonna start mixing together um, everything else. So, like I said, we're using lean ground turkey. So this is 93% lean, I believe. We're gonna just slide that into the bowl. So next we are gonna add the Worcestershire sauce. So Worcestershire sauce, I'm glad I said that right. Um, it's about one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire. Dump that in there. And then right here, we're gonna be using ketchup. So, push that off. This again is about one and a half teaspoons of ketchup. So I grew up and we actually always used ketchup, not just in the meatloaf, but on top of the meatloaf. I know other people sometimes use barbecue sauce um, or other sauces on top. But in this recipe, we're gonna do it just like how I used to make it, and we are gonna use ketchup on top of the meatloaf as well. Okay. So next, we're gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. I pre-measured this. Again, this is about a half a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper. And you can adjust again, of course, to your own personal preference. So we're gonna mix that in. All right, and it's coming together so nicely now. So we are going to crack this egg. Um, this recipe calls for half of an egg. I know Robin was talking to me earlier and she's saying that it would make a great recipe to double and keep in the freezer for a really easy weeknight meal. Um, so if you are doubling it, use a whole egg. If not, we're gonna kind of guesstimate with this. But crack this. All right. And then I'm just gonna really quickly beat this a little bit to combine it. All right, that looks good. And we are gonna add about half. I'd say that's about half. Okay. So then we are gonna add the oats that have been sitting here for a few minutes. We want the oats to sit for about five minutes, give or take. Pour that in there. And then the last ingredient that we're gonna be adding is the vegetables. I think those look good. Yeah, I do. All right. Perfect. And I'm going to steal this. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna start mixing this together. You can absolutely use your hands as well. Just make sure you wash them first. 
We're gonna use this, the veggies are kind of hot right now, so we're gonna just mix it with the spoon. And this is the entire recipe. So I told you it was super simple. Um, it makes for a really, really easy weeknight dinner. Um, and as I had mentioned before, meatloaf is something that freezes really well, um, both as a whole meatloaf, or if you wanna take it a step further, you can even cut it into slices individually and freeze it like that. Um, I know growing up, we did that quite often. Um, you know, busy nights, you always wanna have a healthy dinner to come home to. So this is coming together very nicely. There's so much color in this. Again, like I said, the more color we can add into our meals, the better off we are. I always consider that a gift from the freezer when I open it up I and know. I find a frozen meatloaf in there. It's like, okay, we can eat tonight. <laughs> it definitely is. I'm all about freezer, frozen dinners. Make it once or cook once, eat twice. Okay, so that looks about good. You can see it there, it's all nice and uh, the right consistency. All right, now last step of this, we are going to use a baking dish right here. I'm gonna spray this with a little bit of oil to make sure it doesn't stick. It's good enough. And all we are going to do is pour this right into it. Go. Gosh, in that glass pan, you could see all the color. It just looks healthy, doesn't it? It does, it does. This is a really great recipe too for families. Um, I've given it to quite a few friends um, who have kids and everyone says it's a huge crowd pleaser. So we are going to shape this a little bit into a meatloaf. Doesn't need to be perfect. And then we are gonna throw it in the oven. So we are gonna cook this at about 375 degrees. Um, and it's gonna go in the oven for about 40 to 45 minutes but we are gonna check the temperature before it comes out to make sure that it's cooked through. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like before it goes in the oven. I'm gonna take it over now, throw it in, and it's gonna be ready in a little less than an hour. So I'm going to be making the creamy polenta. So what we have in our pot already is some water. And, uh, and we are using whole milk in this recipe. Um, it's just a little bit richer and a little bit more satisfying that way. Um, the turkey meatloaf is a low fat, so you know we're talking about some balance. So in making polenta, I think the key here, and I make it as often as I can, um, I love the creaminess, I love corn, um, and it's just a nice way to bring corn in to your diet in uh, the winter months. So, but the key to it is lump control, is how I call it. So you want to make sure that the, uh, that the liquid is boiling and then use your whisk. Okay, so you want to make sure that as you're sprinkling the polenta into your boiling liquid that you're keeping everything moving. You want the, the grains to dance on the surface. Now, this recipe is a little bit of a cheat, I think, in terms of lumps because we're actually adding corn. And I do want to say that in the summertime, uh, you absolutely should use fresh corn on this. You don't even have to cook it. Get a cob, cut the kernels off, and toss them in here, and you have something that you just cannot believe how delicious it is. The, yeah, so we just wanna get that so it's just hydrated, and then I think we'll be a little bit safe from, uh, from our lumps. Um, so we're going to be cooking this for about five minutes. And then in the meantime, I'm gonna grab some fresh thyme from our little um, herb garden here. And oh my gosh, there's nothing like fresh herbs. So let me turn this down. It's got such a good strong smell already. Oh my gosh, it does. It, and as soon as you start breaking those leaves, that's when you smell the essential oils in the herb. So the easiest way of removing the leaves from thyme is to just kind of pull back 
on them away from the way they naturally grow. And I'm not even going to chop these. You know, the smaller stems, I don't care if they get in there. It's a little tedious, but I don't know. I always find this part of the, uh, of cooking, I don't know, the spiritual part for me. It's, uh, you know, it's just relaxing. I love touching, you know, my fresh produce, especially if I've grown it in my own garden. And, you know, so just pulling those leaves off and then it does smell fabulous. Give this. I'm give it a store. A a it's coming together nicely already. It is. It is, and it is quick cooking. I mean, if you think about it, I use it as a substitute for potatoes. I use it as a substitute for rice. Uh, I love shrimp and grits. Um, do you know the difference between polenta and grits? To be honest, I think I've always used them interchangeably. I and yeah, actually you can use them interchangeably, but don't tell Southerners that and don't tell a good Northern Italian that. Um, they're actually, a little bit more different than just the geography of them. Polenta is usually uh, made from yellow corn. It is a different variety of corn. And, um, and grits are usually made from white corn or hominy. Uh, and they're usually a little bit finer of a grain. So polenta has a, has a little bit more toothiness. It's, okay. It's a coarser grain. Um, and the yellow in here is there for a reason. It's, uh, it contains antioxidants. It does have those carotenoids. And fiber, another and good source of fiber. Absolutely. And um, so it definitely makes for a more nutritious meal. And if you think about, you know, we boiled the milk and the water. We didn't have to peel potatoes. You know, it didn't take any effort that way. So less than 15 minutes side and you're good to go. Exactly. And it's just as creamy as mashed potatoes. And, um, you know, just something a little bit different. Okay, so I have my time here. I'm gonna try and get rid of any remnant stems. And I think a lot of times too, with, with new ingredients like you know polenta, it can be sometimes intimidating to use them if you don't know how to cook them. So hopefully by showing you guys this today, you're inspired to go out and try something new that maybe you never tried before. All right, so that is nice. And cooked. And what is your side today? What are you making? So we're going to be doing a blistered green bean recipe, and we are going to get started with that momentarily. So the term blistered, all it really means is that we're going to cook it at a high heat. We're going to get it so it almost blisters. It's going to turn dark, almost black. We're going to flip it and do the exact same thing. To add some flavor to this dish, we're going to be using um, capers, which I absolutely love using in dishes. We're gonna add a little bit of heat with some red pepper flakes. You can absolutely omit these if you don't like spicy foods. Um, and then of course, the key ingredient to everything is garlic. Um, so in this case, we're gonna use four large cloves. I know the recipe says six small. You can use either of them. For this recipe though, you don't wanna use the minced garlic because you wanna slice these. We're gonna slice these pretty thin um, and that's gonna help enhance that flavor a little bit more. So this is almost ready. To Perfect. Go. So let me grab the olive oil and then also we're going to bring this cutting board back for a moment. Okay, so I'm going to start heating again just a little bit of olive oil on this, heating it up. So in this case, since we are blistering, we are going to use more olive oil than we did when we were sauteing the veggies. So we're going to use about a third of a cup of olive oil. And olive oil is a very heart healthy fat. So it's gonna be full of those omega-3s and omega-3s are very anti-inflammatory. You know, other sources of omega-3s, if you like walnuts, that's an excellent source, or chia seeds, flax seeds. There's a lot of easy ways that we can get in those omega-3s in our diet. So we've got that oil in here. It's just coating the bottom. Ooh, that looks so good. It is good. I think I'm gonna add my other ingredients here. You okay, think that's all right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to add corn. Today we are using frozen corn, which um, there's no nothing wrong in using frozen corn. It's available. It's usually picked and frozen uh, very quickly, so the nutrients are preserved. There's still some crispiness to it, but I'm telling you in the summertime, you absolutely want to use fresh corn here. 
So I'm going Nothing's to, better than fresh corn. Nothing's better than fresh corn. Okay, so we're gonna get that in there. We're going to add, uh, I think two tablespoons of butter. Yep, and two it, tablespoons of butter. And it's just, again, for a little bit of, of richness. And it just gives it such a nice mouthfeel. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And it definitely does thicken up once you're adding all these ingredients. Oh, absolutely. This is gonna mound nicely. And then, we can't forget the best part, which is the thyme. And then I did chop this a little bit, just in case I had a couple of stems in there. And we're going to add that. All right. There we go. So nice and herby. And this is going to go great with the meal. I can taste it already. One nice thing about this meal, too. So, you know, I know a lot of times you talk about my plate, and my plate is just a visual of what an ideal plate would look like. And the idea is that we want about half of our plate to be filled with the vegetables. We want about a fourth of the plate to contain a lean protein, and then about a fourth of the plate to contain um, that carbohydrate or that starch. So we're getting veggies both from the green beans and the veggies that we put in the meatloaf. Um, and then our protein is gonna be our meatloaf, and then our starch is gonna be this delicious polenta dish. Works for me. All right, so this oil is getting nice and hot. I'm actually gonna turn it down a little bit. When the oil starts to kind of simmer and it almost gets like a glossier look to it, you know it's ready. So while Robin was finishing off this dish, I just thinly sliced some garlic. So um, you can see here, it's not necessarily that we're mincing it, we're thinly slicing it. So there is a lot of garlic in this recipe. I don't think there's such a thing as too much garlic. Maybe there is. Not if you're Italian though. Okay, so grab. This is simmering in here nicely. Very strong garlic smell already. Okay, so we are going to add the blistered green beans. We're gonna, be add, oh, we're gonna add the green beans to the oil. So this is about one pound of green beans. All I did to prepare these was I cut off the ends and of course I washed them. So it's super important to wash all of your vegetables, whether they're organic or non-organic, before you use them. So we are going to add these in. This just reminds me of so much of summer because that's like that is something that I really enjoy growing in my garden. What else do you grow in your garden? Oh my goodness, I grow so many things. Um, I actually start my green beans from seeds and I grow uh, green green beans and I happen to like bush beans. You know, you, they grow in vines, which oh, makes I've them never really heard of that. easy to pick. And then there are bush beans that grow low and I just like I think bush beans are more tender. Okay. And so I don't mind the work in bending down because you could get a handful of green beans and you have a serving of green beans in one hand. I'm so envious of your garden. I had the opposite of a green thumb. Every single plant I try to grow dies. Um, so one of these days I've got to commit to a garden in the summer, yeah. but I always hear about everything that you're, you're making and producing and it's, it's always nice to be able to grow your own food. Like you said, you kind of have a different connection to it when you're growing it yourself. Well, I usually can't eat everything I grow anyway, so you know I'll bring it. Oh, I know. It's always nice in the summer. She'll come in with her abundance of produce that she can't finish, and we're all excited to have it. I actually grow purple green beans as well. They come in, no, I you know, seen yellow those in a green. really long time. But they're a little deceptive because they, when you cook them, they kind of turn green but they are purple, so the color that comes from them is from that antioxidant, the, oh. an, yeah, the... Um, the same one that's found in the, the grapes, the is it? Yeah, the okay. anthocyanin. And the red wine. Yeah, both of those. So real quick, I'm just gonna add in the spices to this. So as I said, we're gonna be using capers. So we're gonna put one tablespoon of the capers in here. Got a lot of water in that, so we're gonna add a little bit more. There we go. All right, and then we're gonna add in the red pepper flakes. So 
I am not a spice girl. I don't handle heat very well, but we're gonna add just a little bit, um, a little under a teaspoon of this. If you do like heat, feel free to add more. Okay. So as you can see here, they're cooking quite nicely. They're boiling. Mix it up a little bit. Dude, even the garlic gets mustard. Yeah, everything does. Okay, we are going to mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna turn the heat up a bit. Be careful, the oil, oil sometimes uh, splatters a little bit. A lot of cooking injuries here. Okay, you can hear the sizzle. So we are gonna let this cook for a couple more minutes. At the end, all we're going to do is just season with a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, and that's all we have to do for this recipe. And then we are gonna plate it and enjoy this absolutely delicious meal. I don't think I've seen you cook these. These? Yeah. No, I tried this recipe for the first time actually over the summer because you had suggested it. Um, and I made it for me and my fiance and we both were really big fans of it. And again, it's a super easy recipe with minimal ingredients and you can never go wrong with that. But the ingredients that are in it are so flavorful. The capers, you know, yeah. adding that little bit of saltiness. Um, the garlic is, you know, speaks to itself. And then the little bit of heat. And I absolutely love capers, but the only recipe I've ever actually used them in, not even a recipe, but I've only put them over lox and cream cheese. Um, so, <laughs> one of my favorites. Um, but it's nice to have other recipes that we can incorporate these flavors into. Okay. So while these are cooking too, I also want to take a moment just to thank our sponsors over at Azai. So we would not have been able to put on this presentation and this cooking series without them. So we really do appreciate their support in all of this. This has uh, been a long time coming and it's, it's really nice to be back in the cooking studio. We took about a year off and I think we all missed it quite we, significantly. We do, we do. We would run our cooking studio programs every Friday and you know, it's it's the kind of thing that, you know, we, we it's the audience is mostly our patients and um, it's just so nice the relationships that we established with our patients over food, where so much of food in cancer treatment can seem like a negative thing, and but bringing them into this lovely space and um, sharing a meal with them in a relaxed format is um, like, I think a tr it's a true joy yeah. for me. And I think one thing too that I really enjoy is that, you know, we can say, eat your veggies, eat more fiber, you know, eat more lean proteins. But when we're in the kitchen, we can actually show you how to do these things. And it can be overwhelming to think you have to change your diet and make all these changes all at once. But, you know, it's a lot easier when we're able to show you just how easy it is to eat delicious and nutritious food. And it's also a good opportunity, I find, for people to maybe try something that they would not have thought Absolutely. about trying and they don't have to make a full commitment to it, but then being able to take it home and introducing it to somebody yeah. else. So yeah. it's like, you know, they told a friend and they told yeah. two friends and four friends. So it's, you know, it's spreading the message. Yeah. And I think so many times we've had people come up to us and say that they would never have tried this dish at home and now they're gonna go make it. So I think that's a really good feeling on our end too, to be able to, to know that the food that we're making is making a difference. Yeah, All right, I think these look like they're about done. I am gonna go grab the meatloaf out of the oven and we're gonna do a quick temperature check. Again, like I said before, we wanna make sure the internal temperature is at about 165 degrees. Do you mind just stirring this while I, I keep go over? Going. It's nice, I think, when there's still some green, green beans, you Ooh. know, in here. We're gonna put that, look at this meatloaf. Oh, that looks good. I like the little bit of caramelization on the top. I know, it's absolutely delicious. So, could I steal that cutting board? Yes. Okay. So we are gonna let this sit for a minute. Let me get my thermometer. So when you're checking the temperature of a food, you wanna make sure that you're checking one of the thicker areas in it. So for example, if you just stick it in the corner, the temperature is gonna be hotter than that internal temperature. So we wanna stick it right in the center to get a true read. Okay, and we are good. So this is ready to eat.
So this is especially important for our patients uh, who may be immunosuppressed from some of their treatments, that mm -hmm. we're always talking about food safety, and making sure that we're cooking foods to a proper temperature so that you won't get sick from food. I mean, the rest of us have pretty good immune systems, mm -hmm. but that's not always the case with our patients. Okay. So we're gonna take this out of here. Oh, I think you can do that. Let's see if that works. Ooh, this smells so good. It's so juicy too. We're gonna lay that right there. I can't wait to dig into this. Okay, I think these are about done. Okay. okay. So I am gonna slice this. Like I said before, if you are meal prepping in advance, you can absolutely cut it and freeze it individually. Just make sure it's in a freezer safe container or bag so it doesn't get freezer burnt. We're gonna slice this. Ooh. Now if you look at the inside of this, you see all the little pieces, you see all the colors from the carrots and the zucchini and the onions. All of those fruits and vegetables add such a delicious flavor to this dish. And then I think it's just highlighted even more by the sides that we're choosing. So we are gonna get this plated and then we are going to dig in. I just tasted the corn. Is it good? It's delicious. I just oh. added a little bit of salt. It's creamy and crunchy from the corn. I think this is a winner. And the thyme is, is just enough, you know, but not overwhelming. It's lovely. And using those spices too is a great way to reduce the amount of salt you're using in the recipe mm -hmm. because you're getting those flavors from so many other things, like all of these wonderful spices, especially during those summer months. It's actual flavor. Exactly. I mean, salt is just meant to bring out the flavors in foods, um, not to be the predominant flavor. Mm -hmm. And I think that we don't realize that until you actually don't eat salt for a while and mm -hmm. then you taste your food that's well seasoned. And I think that kind of goes for a lot of things, you know, even with sugar. When we're eating a lot of sugary foods, we tend to crave more sugar. You know, when you start decreasing the amount of sugar you're, you're having, your body stops craving it as much. Um, and you're able to get satisfied with a smaller amount. So well, that looks like a this my plate portion. Delicious. Would I would say so. Mm. You can never go wrong with too many veggies. Right. And then a nice dollop. Mm. So this is my kind of meal. This is 100% something that I would eat on my own. So take a look at that. How delicious does that look? And this entire meal was prepared in, what was it, 30 minutes or less? The 30 to 40 minutes that it takes to cook the meatloaf. And that's it. So I hope you enjoy this delicious meal. If you are looking for the recipe, it can be found in the confirmation email or in the link below. And make sure to stay tuned and sign up for our next event later next month. Um, we're so excited you were able to join us today and we hope to see you again soon.